Hey guys, uh, back here finally with another video. It's been a really big season of alpine climbing for me. And I just sort of wrapped up the bulk of it. Now I'm out here at Leavenworth just climbing for fun. And I wanted to actually take this time to make a few videos. Um, and uh, a number of these videos I've been working on for a little bit in my head are more of talking point videos that sort of explain the reasoning behind why we do what we do. And um, I wanted to start this sort of new idea of this series off with something very common, clipping into the middle of the rope. So I have a section of the rope right here tied with whatever knot I want. And I'm gonna talk about why we use two carabiners to clip into the middle of the rope. So if I were to start at the very beginning here, this is the classic mountaineering setup. We just have one carabiner clipped into our rope, single action locker. Um, and this is kind of what people rolled with for a long time. There are a number of reasons why we don't do this anymore. The biggest one being that if this thing flips over, which it's prone to do quite a bit, just from the vibrations of my body while I'm walking, this gate will actually rattle open. And then all of a sudden my locking carabiner becomes a non-locker. And uh, I do it all the time while I'm out in here because I'm like bored, uh, where I have my carabiner clipped on my belay loop like this, and I'll flip it around, and then an hour later it's locked, and then um, I'll flip it around this way, and then in another hour it's unlocked. So it's kind of amazing what the vibrations will actually cause even fairly worn carabiners to come undone. And I also see it in top rope climbing too, when the rope goes up and through the lockers on the top rope, if one of them gets flipped over after one climb, sometimes some of those carabiners come unlocked. And so that's why we use two lockers at the master point. And so that is one argument why you do not want to just do one carabiner right here, especially a, a single lock action like this. Another reason is if you cross load the carabiner, everyone knows that that can be bad news because of the uh, dramatic weakness in the carabiner when it is in cross loading with its sideways axis right here. Now in the event of a fall, you're probably not going to override the strength of the carabiner if you fall on it like this. I've actually taken many lead falls where my belayers had a cross-loaded carabiner and I've been just fine. But uh, this it can be bad in certain circumstances. The most common one seems to be when people do fall in a crevasse and then um, their partners, because of whatever hauling system they use, actually haul them the climbers into the lip of the crevasse. And what uh, we found is this can be the weakest point in the system. And so before my back breaks, while I'm being bent over, being hauled into the lip of a crevasse, the carabiner can actually break. We can exceed the eight or seven kilonewton rating that many of these carabiners have when they're cross loaded. And so it's just getting pretty close to the safety margins. And there are stories of people falling on Denali or whatever, sometimes with a fully loaded pack. And even with that, when they're being bent over backwards, the carabiner will still fail first. So that being said, we move now to the industry standard of two locking carabiners or a single locking and a non-locking carabiner. And uh, what I would try to do is at least, when I use two lockers, I try to use two of the same lockers. And when I'm using a locker and a non-locker, try to make them pretty close in size. You can see how that's pretty close. So you can see how that size difference that's a little extreme. So that, that is kind of crazy different right there. We want carabiners that are pretty close in size to the lockers just to make them nest well. For this example, I'll use two lockers. So if the carabiners flip around like this, both are unlocked now, but still by being opposite and opposed, they still equal one locker. So you have that safety aspect. I try to keep them flipping down so that way I have them locked, stay locked. If one flips over like this and that comes unlocked, it's still, once you flip them over, you still have one of these locked. So that helps out with that safety issue of not coming undone. And when they get cross loaded now, these carabiners are seven, no, eight. These carabiners are eight kilonewtons cross loaded. So now I have 16 kilonewtons, which means that we're basically trying to keep ourselves the weakest link in the system. So I'm not worried about my carabiners getting overrided in some sort of haul system. In addition, when you're on the glacier and walking for like seven hours up and four hours down, spending like 11 hours on the rope, 
it is nice to have that connection to the rope, that critical connection, be a little bit more beefed up. If I'm just doing like um, maybe an hour on a rope, I may only use one locker. Or if it's just a little patch of short roping here or there, short snow, snow short roping. And I guess that gets into more like guiding situations. We may only use one carabiner to expedite um, efficiency. But if you're going to be on the rope for like a couple of hours, it's really nice to have two carabiners. So you may ask yourself, like, this is a single action locker. What if I use an auto locker? And so there are a couple different auto lockers on the market. I actually have a video that talks all about locking carabiners. Uh, but they have a double lock, which is usually a twist and pull, and then a triple action, which is kind of a push up, twist and pull. And uh, while that triple action locker would solve the issue of the gate coming unlocked, it doesn't solve the issue of the strength for being cross loaded. And so if you only want to use one locker on your belay loop, you can buy these carabiners that come with captured eyes. And they, a number of companies make them. This is an example of one. It doesn't quite fit all the criteria because it's a single action locker right here. But uh, Black Diamond makes a Magnetron version of this, which is very commonly used. I also personally like the locking carabiners where if I forget to clip them in my belay loop, this is my belay loop, if I pull the locker, the belay loop clips into place, as opposed to the lockers where you have to lift up the wire and clip it in. Because the ones that you have to lift up the wire, it could actually get bumped and then come out of that alignment. So when I'm uh, selecting my carabiners to clip into the rope for glacier travel, I go for ones where I pull down when I clip it on my belay loop to get it into place. Now the Magnetron version of this is a great carabiner to use. I use that a lot. A new one that I just got is this Gravel. What's it called? Clip Cedra S. And so this has two gates going in opposite directions like so. And so it kind of, it pretty much equals a triple action locker in most people's opinion because it's very unlikely that the rope is actually going to slip out of that. And it's locking itself automatically as well as it fits my criteria for the wire going down. So all I have to do is clip this onto my belay loop and then tug. And then now it's a, because of that captured eye, it's really impossible for this carabiner to become cross loaded in a fall. I have the triple action function right here that the rope is not going to slip out of. And then I have the captured eye that the belay loop's not gonna slip out of. And because of that, I can now use one carabiner, clipping myself into the glacier, and I'm not worried about this coming undone at all unless I unclip it myself. Those are your options for clipping into the rope on the glacier. If you go to any guided group, then these are all perfectly fine options. So if you're researching this to climb Rainier or Baker or whatever with a guided crew, the, those are your options. That's the reason why they have you buy two carabiners. If you have any other thoughts or any other carabiners you'd like to use or any questions, then feel free to leave a comment. I try to get back to them as soon as I can. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>